Welcome to Workflow. And uh, in today's Workflow segment, we're going to talk about, uh, what are we going to talk about? Camera modes. Camera modes, auto, manual, priority. Auto, manual, priority. So what are, we're going to talk a little bit about what these modes mean, and we're going to talk about some specific examples. When would you, and why would you want to use manual versus auto versus aperture or shutter priority mode? Mm-hmm. So we're going to start with <coughs> the... What are we going to start with? Auto. Let's start with auto. Let's start with auto. When would you use auto? What's an appropriate setting for auto? What's an appropriate setting for auto? Yeah. Hmm. If I don't want to worry about, have to worry about the camera settings at all when I'm flying, that's the only time I would I would set up in auto. I wonder when that would arise. Never, because I Never? always care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. What if you... Uh, Saw something crazy going on, and you just wanted to get your drone in the air and catch it, and without wondering if it's going to look good. I, you know what, I would still, still probably hit like aperture priority and try to get it right or within the reason. Mm-hmm. But that's me. We'll get to the aperture. So there's really there, not so. a good time for auto. Well, you know what? If yes, there is a really good time for auto. Actually, if I get my when I get my second drone. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm learning how to fly. Oh, and I'm I'm trying to pay attention a- to that part, and and or maybe you know what I just got the drone for activity flying. Mm-hmm. I got like a Mavic Air, and I just want to go out there shoot and have some quick edit on my iPad and beam it right to the universe there. That's when you set your things in auto. That's a really. very good point, yeah. actually. And we'll have a few tricks or a few tips for people who want to set up or how to how to kind of set up the looks or how to edit or pre-edit your footage mm-hmm. if you're if all you're gonna be doing is to to be cutting it in the app and 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 just exporting it to Facebook. There are still some things and some tips that you can you can apply to this, but that's when I would shoot in auto. And I would still compensate probably like EV compensation because you can do it in auto. Mm-hmm. And depending on what you're shooting. So if you're shooting like at the winter scenes, remember we we're talking about the snow scenes. Mm-hmm. And because if you set your camera in auto, you're giving all the power or the control to the camera. And the camera gets to decide what the exposure is. So if right. it's looking at the white scene at the snow, it doesn't understand that, hey, this is snow. It's okay for it to be white like this. It's looking at overexposed. What it sees, right. it's an overexposed scene. So that's why that's it's gonna try to underexpose stuff. And unless you you compensate for it, unless you bump up the exposure compensation, if you mm-hmm. have that function by like a third or maybe maybe two thirds of a stop, it, all your snow and ice stuff is gonna look dark. It's gonna look grayish, <clears throat> you know, because right, the camera right. does it. So uh, there are a few tricks to that. But uh, other than that, you know, nighttime I would underexpose it by like negative one seven or negative two because the cameras try to, you know, it's gonna try to run hot. It's gonna look at all that dark. It doesn't understand that, okay, well, this is the night sky. Um, It's okay for it to be dark. Mm -hmm. It's looking at the scene and it sees, oh, underexposed, I have to, you know, crank this up. So you're gonna end up with a lot of noise in the sky. So obviously it's gonna break the the ISO if you have an auto setting on that too. And um, it's not necessary to be running it that high. So you can use some of the exposure compensation even if you're using auto, and that's mm. a good way to actually to help your footage to look better. For the, the really bright scenes, uh, you know, try try playing the snow scenes overexposed, and night scenes try to set exposure, uh, you know, underexposed mm. a bit, if you're gonna leave your camera in auto. That's a good tip. That is a good tip. <clears throat> so that is the tip number one. Uh, before we move to the manual, I'd like to cover the priority modes first sure, because sure. that that makes sense. And if you guys don't know what the the priority modes are, you'll see on on most of the drones that give you aperture control, uh, most of the cameras that give you aperture control, you have a setting that uh, the symbol A, which stands aperture priority, and the symbol S usually, which is the shutter right. priority, and what that basically means that on the cameras that have that kind of control, you're locking in the aperture. So you're telling the camera that, okay, I will let you play with everything else. Well, meaning the shutter speed. Mm-hmm. You get to decide if you turn your ISO, if you turn it into auto ISO, then you're letting the camera decide what ISO to use too. Uh, we'll cover the ISO. It's a whole different segment. Right. Uh, so what are the, what are the benefits about. to... But the benefits to the aperture priority, yeah. uh, the aperture priority is... If you, okay, if you care enough to have your settings right or about ideal camera settings, 
And if you're flying in a single operator or even two operator, and if you have a scenes with changing exposure a lot, so if you're going from a, from a scene in one shot from looking, say, at the horizon or mm -hmm. at the sun, you know, say sunset, and all of a sudden you turn down and you want to capture something that's right underneath it, it's very difficult environment for the camera to understand. And the smaller the sensor on a camera, the, the lower the dynamic range, kind of. Mm -hmm. And the lower the dynamic range, the more difficulties is the camera going to have exposing these scenes going from the really bright to really dark if you leave it in auto or even if you leave it in mm -hmm. manual. If you leave it in aperture priority, uh, what I do, <clears throat> I set up a good middle. So I look at something that would, I would consider, you know, kind of like a median exposure, I call it. And I set my aperture priority and I, I I'm set my aperture and I'm watching my shutter speed. And I get my shutter speed because this is video. I get my mm -hmm. shutter speed to the 180 degree rule, which you know says that your shutter speed should be <clears throat> roughly double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, I want to shoot for 160th shutter speed because that gives me just enough motion blur to it, so the video is not jittery. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it just gets the shot to be smooth, really nice and smooth. Um, but so I'm going to play with my aperture until I see the camera set the shutter speed to the 60th on my average scene. And because it, it is a rule, 180 degree rule, it's mm -hmm. meant to be broken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long it's as you okay know the rule, it, It's okay if it's a 60th. It's okay to have it on 50th. It's okay to have it on yeah. 80th. It's okay to have it on 100th. For If you need it for that one shot and if you're battling very, you know, limited dynamic range yeah. and you want to keep it around that ideal middle, this is the best way you can, in my opinion, that's the best way you can set yourself up. Or if you have to move quickly through a different exposure seasons or you're changing, uh, you know, sequences or you're chasing something and you need to focus on your composition because it changes fast and you don't have a time to worry about resetting your, you know, exposure or re-changing re your aperture mid-flight, that's the best way to go. Uh, and the reason why it's better than the shutter priority, uh, which is where you would look in the shutter, you, you, can, you can ask, okay, it's 180 mm -hmm. degree rule, why wouldn't I just lock the shutter speed at 160th and then let the camera change the aperture as I go through the, the sequences, you know, through mm -hmm. the changing exposures? Oh, yeah. There is a really good reason for Very it. good reason. <laughs> and I learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> it is because the aperture changes in the larger steps by the stop. And whenever the camera decides to change the aperture going through the shot, you can change it. You can see it. You can see it. It's visible in the footage. It's mm -hmm. a visible step in exposure change in the shot, and it's very difficult to edit later. You can literally, if you and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's happened to many people, and I'm sure this is how they learn. I'm, I'm, this happened is to how, me. This is how everybody learned yeah. what what it does. So if I leave it in auto and my camera, you know, can decide what the aperture it chooses. It will, you will see visible steps from higher to lower exposure. Your shot is not going to look that great. And you could you could address that in the post a little bit, but there are limitations to that. It never really looks right. So I'd rather have the aperture locked and have the shutter speed changing because those changes are much more subtle. They're, they're, not, they're not abrupt. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, so it goes from, you know, through the exposure changes really smoothly. And you can see it changing as it travels through different shutter speeds, but you're not gonna, I'd rather have maybe the end of the shot a little more jittery if it's one shot and have the shot exposed properly. Yeah, yeah. exposure, I and would and rather the, and opt carry, for the exposure. Yeah, and carry the proper exposure throughout the whole shot. So mm -hmm. for the video, it's aperture priority. Now, so when would I ever wanna use shutter priority? Mm -hmm. I thought you never asked. <laughs> yeah, when? <laughs> when? When would you use When that? would you? So stills, right? That's where that comes handy because with the still photos, you uh, it doesn't you don't see any exposure changes. It's a still. Mm -hmm. So, but you do care about your shutter speed. And if you have, you know, let's say you're you're a place where you're going from shooting into the sun to going shooting away from the sun, or Going, going from high exposed to low exposed shots, you still care about your shutter speed. That's what's important because if the shutter speed is too low, things are gonna blur out. Right, and you can use that to your advantage in some some photography techniques, like uh, the night, you know, the long exposure mm -hmm. pictures at night to to blur out the light trails or the 
the veils, the, the veils? waterfall veils. Yeah, oh, veils. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a veil. I've just right never heard of called that before. Yeah, like bridal veils, you know. Huh. Yeah. Okay. You never heard it before? No. There you go. A, a Is it a photographer Slo- term? A or Slovakian just taught you a new word. Oh, in, a, in American. In a, yeah. <laughs> no, ask Andy. Andy loves veils. He does. Yeah. He loves so those long he exposures. It, that's a, you know what? That's a whole different story. So we'll have a whole different segment about just that kind of photography. So mm-hmm. back to... Back to the shutter, back to the shutter speed, and why would you want uh, the shutter priority, and why would you want to use it in in a still photography? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? If you're just flying around and you want to have some fun, and you don't want to have to worry about setting this and setting that, uh, you you still want to worry about your shutter speed because I, I wouldn't go anywhere lower than like one eightieth to prevent the motion blur. And still at one eightieth, mm-hmm. if you have something moving, something moves really fast, you'll still see a little blur. 100th, 120th is a good good point to be if you want to be safe on a safe side. 200th, 240th, and up and faster. It's like a safe side for not having any motion blur. Right, right. On your on your um, photos in your photos, and then you let the camera handle the aperture. Same same thing happens. Same rules apply to the exposure compensation. So you know, look at your picture. You can. Add mm-hmm. exposure, or you can subtract. You still have the exposure compensation control in those modes, and you're just letting the camera, out, you know, handle either the aperture in the shutter priority mode, or handle the shutter speed in the aperture priority mode. Mm-hmm. So the aperture priority better for video, shutter priority better for stills, if you have that function. Now, if you have a camera that does not have an aperture or controllable aperture, like you know, the, some of the Mavics, most of the Mavics actually. No, yeah, all of the, the all of the Mavics, all of the Mavics. <laughs> yeah, no Mavics. Yeah, oh yeah, maybe but, uh, maybe the soon Phantom, the Phantom Four. Maybe soon. Oh yeah, I just, have, I've oh, heard some no. rumors. I you didn't hear it here. You did no. not hear it here. No rumors no, here. No rumors here. But uh, mo- all of the Mavics and uh, the the Phantom Four and and you know some of the uniques, uh, a lot mm-hmm. of those those uh, hobby machines or even the prosumer machines, they are at the set aperture and that aperture is usually f to eight, so it's pretty wide right. open. It's not ideal. I like setting up if I'm setting up aperture priority. I like setting up about mid range, you know, five six four five. Right. There are a few reasons for that, especially on a Phantom 4, you know, to avoid the flares. If you're looking into the sun, you want to keep it more mm. on the open side. Yeah. The reason why it's set at 2.8 for the cameras that don't have the aperture control is because it has to perform well in all environments. So 2.8 is usually the limit, you know, of that mm-hmm. camera where it can open and that will work well in a low light. It will work well everywhere in all the environments right. it can encounter. It's not ideal, though. No, you know, it's you kind of like a faster. wing of an airplane. It's it's built to do everything, but it's not really doing none of those things to that hundred percent of what mm-hmm. it could be. So it's it's kind of like that, and that's fine. Not all the situations you want to deal with the aperture control, but mm-hmm. if you do have it and you do have those modes, uh, aperture priority, shutter priority, try it for video photos and see if that helps you out. It, it does help automate things a little mm-hmm. bit and make them a little more convenient for you, and it helps you get shots and like chase shots and and good shots without having to worry about losing losing the exposure mm-hmm. in them. So I'm a big fan. But also, uh, so when you're in the shutter priority, uh-huh. your aperture is going to be opening and closing, correct? Yeah. So that's also going to change your focal point. So that would then put us into manual mode being better, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it could, but, you know. Because now we're not, because now everything's. focusing anyway, so if you're focused to infinity or, like, mm-hmm. really near infinity, it doesn't really matter on, on most of the machines, most of the units. Correct, But yeah. you, you are correct. If you're if you're opening it all the way up on, you know, let's say, like, the any of the SLR cameras, you you do run into that at some point, so you, you do have to keep mm-hmm. the focus in mind, yes. But uh, you also have to keep, it's the same, you have to keep the focus in mind in the manual settings too, so it, it's the same. Mm-hmm. But the manual, if you're a control freak, that's what you can that's Yeah, what you can I'm do. a control that's freak. Can, that's what you can use. I do like the manual mode. I do use the aperture priority for the video. I'll I'll proudly mm-hmm. proudly admit it. I think it's a very it's a smart way of going about it. No, I you've, I will, you've swayed me. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will use, and you guys try it. Let me know what you think. I may, that It may work for me. There may mm-hmm. be a good reason why somebody else is not using it. We're looking for your comments. I can think of some cool shots that I have not done before yet. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. So I just open up the possibilities. Oh, See, yeah. this is where we give you inspiration to yeah. improve your drone photography skills. <laughs> it's working as we speak for <laughs> us and the four people listening to this. Hi, Thanks, mom. Hi, Micah's mom. <laughs> um, and, and so it, back to the back to the manual settings, though. I do like the control. I do think it requires some practice. I don't think it's always the most convenient thing. Again, in a shot where you have mm-hmm. to like quickly like carry through, and where you should really worry about your framing and flying the drone rather than you know like the camera shouldn't be your priority or can't be your priority in all the situations Mm -hmm. i'm talking so you know there is some convenience to it but with the manual once you learn your camera well because it does take some practice Mm -hmm. uh, you got to kind of trust your eyes and you have to you know maybe sometimes look at a histogram or the scopes um and and but you know trial and error practice makes perfect I come back, uh, people always say, oh, how do you get these these cool pictures? It's always a great picture. I'm like, no, just the ones I That's show you. That's just the one I showed you. <laughs> yeah. So Three you, good you, ones you, and 90 you, trash you, ones. You, it, there is a lot of <laughs> trial and error. And you know what? If you're, one advice that I would give, if you're, if you're getting into trying the manual settings for the still photos, and you're not terribly sure about like whether to have it a little more, you know, on the overexposed or underexposed side, Always go lean towards underexposed side. It's always easier to recover from it. And for the still pictures, take a bracketed shot. You know, you have up to five brackets. You can do three brackets. And yeah. then you have, you know, the picture, the bracketed shot, if you have that functionality in a drone, it takes three or five pictures at different apertures that are separated by, what, usually two-thirds of a stop. Yeah, so you, there's, you, you there's have, a specific, thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. You, you can build HDRs from them if you wish to, if HDR is your thing. But what you can also do, then you can pick in a post the best exposed one if mm-hmm. you're just a little unsure. So it gives you, especially on the lower dynamic range cameras, it gives you more flexibility, you know, in that. And mm-hmm. shoot raw, don't just shoot JPEGs. You know, leave right. yourself leave yourself Definitely. enough meat, leave, your, leave yourself enough to work with. It's... Um, the difference between JPEG and RAW, and we will have another segment just about that, but I tell people, hey, you can either buy a steak or you can buy a cow and you can decide which part of that cow you're going to use for your steak. It's kind of a gruesome way to describe it, but that's yeah, the, I'll say. to me, that's the difference <laughs> between JPEG and RAW. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like if you're investing money into camera that has capability to write RAW, you know, or the DNG file mm-hmm. for the for the stills, Use it <laughs> because that gives you more flexibility oh, yeah. in in the post. Yeah, if, and once you're getting into the editing, it's amazing just, the the difference. Just when you're trying to see what detail yeah. you can pull out of shadows, yeah, between a DNG and a JPEG. Well, yeah, because JPEG you're not assumed to edit it. JPEG is something that you like sit on, share. You know, it's small, it's a good envelope. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have anything. It's like the camera chose by listening to your setting and whatever else, you know, it, it had to do for mm-hmm. you, white balance, blah, blah, blah. This is what it should look like. And you're not assumed to be messing with JPEGs too much. Mm-hmm. The, the raw, the DNG, if you're into editing later, um, save those those save those save pictures. And you know what? Maybe you j- you're just getting started and you're just starting to take pictures and you're not really sure you don't have a program that would edit or a computer that would edit something like that. I'd say if you have a hard drive space, still save them for later because you, you may you may regret not having not having the raw files. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot that I I remember. Oh, I wish I saved the DNGs from that because it's something that I had DNGs for. Maybe I edited it, you know, like two years ago. But well, let's just say I practice a little more in editing, and I mm-hmm. wish I still had the raw files to maybe turn oh, some yeah. of the. Yeah, two years ago was definitely my saturation slash green tone period. <laughs> 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 yeah, must have been the oh I'm gonna try to do something different from everybody else face you know so al- always do save that if you have it's funny capacity. I did the yeah. exact same thing but yeah. mine was blue we go through the phases and yeah. the blue phase <laughs> which is awesome because you experiment and you see what looks mm-hmm. good you, you never get bored all right well you know that's about it about the whether we should shoot in auto manual aperture priority or shutter priority mode 
Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you very much for listening. Yes, and hopefully this is helpful. Let us know what you think. You can ask us any questions uh, wherever you see comments beneath this. So if you're listening on, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave it on in the YouTube comments. If you see this on our blog at uh, dronephotographypodcast.com, you can leave a comment right there. Uh, the easiest way to get to the blog if you're listening to podcast is by pressing the link in your show notes right there on your screen subscribe to them show notes very convenient we do want to hear from you thank you and we'll be right back after this